Good day everyone. My name is Edric of Midas IT Philippines. Today we're going to do a webinar on the analysis and design of the foundation using Midas Gen and Soilworks. In this webinar, um, we're going to discuss what is the foundation. So a brief introduction to a to the deep foundation and then uh, on our Midas Gen model uh, we're going to analyze that model, get the forces, and then we're going to design the, the pile cap. And we're gonna do a pile analysis using uh, soil works, and then we're going to design the pile. So let's go to the introduction first. So there are two types of foundation. Uh, according to uh, the depth of the foundation which is the shallow or the deep foundation for the shallow foundation uh, the example of this are footing and mat foundation and for the deep foundation there are piles piers and caissons so in this webinar we're going to focus on the pile foundation Also, there are uh, different types of deep foundation. It can be classified according to its material, according to the methods of installation, and by the effects of installation. For the material, uh, you can have a timber, deep foundation, steel, or the most commonly used concrete. For the methods of installation, it can be classified as driven, board, or screwed. For the effect of installation, uh, it can be classified as displacement or non-displacement. In this slide, uh, it shows the load resistance of a pile foundation. So, uh, in this side, uh, it shows that this uh, that the top of the pile is called the pile head, and then the body is called the pile shaft, and then the cross-sectional uh, dimension can be a diameter of uh, if it is a circular pile or the width uh, the width of the pile if it is a uh, non-circular. And then at the bottom, it is called the pile base or the tip of the pile, and it has a certain length. So imagine uh, there is a load Q on the pile. So this is how the pile uh, resists on that load. It has a shaft resistance, or what we call the skin resistance due to skin friction or the friction between uh, the shaft and the soil also it has a base resistance or the uh, tip resistance of the pile so what resists here is the bearing uh, the bearing stress on the soil Uh, also, uh, the deep foundation can resist on shaft resistance only or base resistance only or the combination of these two. So when to use deep foundation? Uh, we're going to use deep foundation when the upper layer of soils are weak and the structural loads are high. Also when the upper uh, soils are subjected to scar and undermining especially uh, on uh, bridges located on river uh, it is uh, advisable if it is subject if the soil is subjected to scar uh, you may use the foundation also if the foundation must penetrate through water if uh, there is a need for a large uplift capacity 
or if there's a need a large lateral load capacity so last uh, we will use a deep foundation for expansive and uh, collapsible soils deep foundations are extended into a stable soil layer beyond the zone where moisture will change So uh, we're gonna go now to our Midas Gen model. So here are the parameters of the um, structural model. So the material properties, uh, concrete, grade C, uh, 4500, for the section uh, properties. So it is uh, four columns and four girders that are assigned to that model and here are the dimensions also uh, I've included the stiffness scale factor for the columns and girders here's the framing plan and the uh, story data or the story height so on the first level it is a 4 meter high and then uh, on the second le uh, level 3.5 up to the fifth level 3.5 meters static load cases I use dead load live load and uh, earthquake x and earthquake y for the dynamic load cases I use response spectrum I name it rx and ry the dead load that I use I, um, are self weight and uh, floor loads live load uh, I use a floor load of 2.4 kPa for the seismic parameters I use UBC 1997 soil profile type ST seismic zone factor zone 4 uh, closest distance to source 5 kilometers importance factor 1 ductility, co uh, ductility coefficient is 8.5 I use peak support on the base of the structure and then the load combinations are generated according to ACI 318-14 So here is the Midas Gen model that we are going to use so I'll just discuss um, briefly how I model this. So first, I add the properties. So I go to material proper uh, to properties tab and then go to material properties. And then here, you can add the material properties. For the sections, you may go to section properties and then click add. Select the shape. So, for example, solid rectangle and then uh, select user so you can uh, define your dimensions. Uh, also, you must input the name and then you may click OK. For the stiffness scale factor, you can go to uh, scale factor and then select section, uh, section stiffness scale factor select the columns so you may select it uh, all at once and then uh, we must modify the uh, IYY and IZZ to 0.7 so here, uh, here it is 0.7 and then for the girders I use 0.35 so here
next is the boundary con uh, boundary con uh, condition so in this model i use a uh, fixed support at the bottom let me show here they're all fixed So how do I model this uh, structure uh, easily? So I go to structure and then use the frame wizard. So under this uh, wizard ribbon, let me show you. Click frame on under base structure, and then you must input the uh, x coordinate and the y coordinate of the frame but in this case it is a z coordinate so what we're going to do is after we input all the uh, values here so for example i use 5 6 repeat 3 and then 5 repeat 3 and then for the y direction i use 6 1 5 two times and then six so these are the base nodes so it is a 48 by 22 uh, structure and then for, uh, you may generate the frame you may select the material so for example let's select first G1 and then on the insert uh, we're going to uh, modify the alpha since uh, what we input here is the z coordinate but actually it is our y coordinate so we're going to rotate that structure along x direction so alpha is rotate uh, rotation along x beta is rotation along y and gamma is rotation along z axis so after you um, generate the uh, the frame on the frame wizard under node element tab you can use the extrude uh, function to generate the columns then next to generate the the rest of the structure you can go to structure tab and then control data and then select building generation so in here you can generate the structure up to uh, as many floor levels you want by uh, by inputting the story height and the number of story for example uh, the next level or at the next four levels you have a uh, let's say three, 3 meter high and then then you may click add and then on the next four level you have a 2.5 or 2.7 uh, high so click add so all in all you can generate uh, eight level from from that uh, for example I selected this one this structure so what the uh, what this building generation function will do is that uh, whatever you select uh, nodes and elements based on this uh, function at the top of this uh, floor it it will add four uh, three meter high uh, similar structure to this and then at the top of that it will generate another four with a uh, 2.7 uh, meter uh, high story and then you may add now your loads so first you must add your static load cases so here I added dead load, live load, EX and EY and then you can add the self weight here 
and then floor loads you may define first your floor loads and then you can now assign the floor loads on each level after that uh, go to dynamic loads to define the response spectrum function and the response spectrum load cases so click rs functions add and uh, let's just do this so if you want to add uh, uh, a function you must click add so let's just uh, show this uh, generated function so here is the generated uh, response spectrum function so um, what we're going to do is to click design spectrum and then uh, input the seismic parameters and automatically it will generate the uh, the curve also I forgot under static load cases or static loads uh, you can add the seismic loads by just click add uh, by just uh, inputting the seismic parameters uh, like the soil profile type seismic zone factor importance factor the period and uh, if you want to add eccentricity then you can add it here then what we're going to do next is to define the story data of the structure because if we do not define the story data uh, the seismic loads cannot be distributed to the structure so to add the story data go to structure tab control data then click story and then you may click auto generate story data and automatically Midas will generate these uh, uh, floor levels for each uh, story of this structure so after that we can now analyze the structure so you may click uh, perform analysis or F5 then after you analyze if you go to results tab you may add load combinations under concrete since this is a concrete structure you can auto generate the load combination by just uh, for example this is uh, ACI 318-14 then uh, you may also add the scale factor for the res uh, response spectrum load cases so uh, what you're going to input here is the uh, the scale factor so that the uh, the response spectrum will reach the uh, so it actually depends on the, st on the structure will reach the 90% or 85% of the static uh, seismic loads so you can uh, you can see this uh, see the scale factor or this uh, scale up factor uh, on our NSCP so after you generate the load combination we can now get the results so what we're going to do is for example we want to design the um, the pile cap So for the design of the foundation So according to NSCP section 413.4 So that is the for the for the deep foundation uh, Number and arrangement of piles Drill pairs and caissons shall be determined from 
uh, unfactored forces and moment transmitted to these members and uh, permissible capacity selected through principles of soil and rock mechanics. So the forces that you will apply to the deep foundations must be uh, analyzed through the principle of soil and rock mecha mechanics. So there are a lot of uh, reference books that you can get uh, to get uh, or to determine the forces that will be transmitted to the uh, to the deep foundation or to your foundation and then under 413.4.2 of the NSCP you may or you can see the procedure for the pile caps and under 413.4.3 is for the, uh, the other deep foundation members So to determine the number of piles, um, there are a lot of ways that we can do to get the number of piles. But uh, this uh, this formula or this guide will allow you to get the minimum number of piles. So whatever you get here will be the minimum. So that uh, those piles will uh, can carry the uh, the load on the from the column or from the piers. So the minimum number of piles is equal to the unfactored load divided by the allowable bearing capacity, where the allowable bearing capacity capacity is the ultimate bearing capacity divided by uh, the factor of safety. And then the ultimate bearing capacity is equal to the shaft resistance plus the tip resistance of the pile. So that is for a single pile. For the pile arrangement, uh, according to NSCP section 413.2.6, foundation systems shall be permitted to be designed. To be designed by any uh, procedure satisfying equilibrium and geometric compatibility. So you can use your engineering skills to determine the pile arrangement uh, on, the, uh, on, on your foundation. And also on NSCP section 413.4.1.1, number and so this is uh, what we discussed earlier. Uh, the number and arrangement of pi shall be determined from unfactored forces and moments transmitted to these members and permissible capacity selected to principles of soil and rock mechanics soil or rock mechanics and under ACI 318-14 on the commentary section R13.2.6 uh, the, the number and arrangement of these permissible values and unfactored uh, applied loads such as T, dead load, live load, wind, and earthquake in whatever combination that go governs the design. So you may uh, read the whole uh, paragraph for this uh, commentary on R13.2.6 of the ACI 318-14. So for the pile spacing uh, on foundation analysis and design by bowls on chapter 18 if you're using a friction pile so you may use a 2d or 1.75 h uh, for the pile spacing so that must be greater than or equal to 760 mm so that is the say so that is for uh, boca for NBC, it's the same. Also for uh, Chicago. For point bearing, so it's the same but they have a different uh, minimum spacing, which is 610. Same as NBC. 
610 millimeters. So for the design of pile cap under uh, so this is NSCP section for 13.4 the overall depth of pile cap shall be selected such that the effective depth of the bottom reinforcement is at least 300 mm so it is state uh, it is stated that the effective depth of the bottom reinforcement is at least 300 mm meaning uh, you cannot use a 300 mm thick for your pile cap because uh, if you use a 300 mm thick uh, it, your effective depth for the bottom reinforcement will be less than 300 millimeters and then factored moments and shear shall be permitted to be calculated with the reaction from any pile assumed to be concentrated at the centroid of the pile section so the analysis uh, for the pile caps is that you assume that it is a a footing but for footing uh, the load uh, on the bottom of the footing are pressure load but in uh, pile caps what you're going to use is uh, point loads on the center of the piles so it's just it's like that uh, you just convert those pressure loads into a point load located where your uh, where your pile is so so for example this is your load and then uh, instead of uh, bearing uh, pressure on this footing the loadings will be a point load here and then a point load here and then here for the design of pile caps so to design the pile cap by using gen and design plus uh, you can actually design the pile cap so let me show you so in this model let me select uh, one node uh, for example I will select this node then after that uh, you can view the reaction so if I select that node uh, the node number will appear here or you may select this display node numbers so that is node 86 and then under result tables you can go to reaction and then for example uh, it, it asks you the node number so by default it will display all the nodes See, but since uh, I, I only want to view the node 86 so I'll just put 86 and then display all the load combination for that um, for that node number so as you can see these are the values for that uh, node number the reaction for that uh, node number so what we're going to do is uh, we're, uh, we're going to get uh, these forces and then use design plus to design the pile cap but uh, in design plus you can actually link the or you can actually link your Midas gen model to the design plus uh, application let me show you so what we're going to do first is we're going to set up our uh, design plus so let's create a new uh, file and then
so before we start on the design of Pilecap, let me just introduce you to Design Plus. Design Plus is a uh, is a tool to design any structural elements of, on your structure. For example, you want to design slab, beam, column, shear wall. So that is for RC. And for steel, you can design beam, column, base plate, bolt connection, uh, purlins, web opening, and then stairs. For composite, uh, composite beam, composite column, and CFT column. So, in this uh, part, we're going to design the pile cap. So, we are going to footing. So, we're going to use isolated footing. Yeah. And also, there's a function here in Design Plus uh, that you can link your Midas Gen model to Design Plus. So, here, as you can see, the Midas link. Uh, function if you click here then this dialog box will appear and then uh, it will show uh, the uh, the Midas Gen model that is open to your uh, window so this is the file that we're going to select so click connect and then automatically uh, design plus and Midas Gen are now linked so instead of uh, getting all the forces from my desk gen, what we're going to do is we'll just select the node and then automatically the design plus will get all the all the forces from uh, from my desk gen and then we can now proceed to to the design part. So for example here we will select this node. So that is node 86 and then we go to design plus as you can see here uh, there's a value here node 86 meaning once uh, I've selected a node on minus gen then automatically design plus will uh, identify that node and uh, we'll get all the forces on that node so click import so here if we go to load combinations so here are the uh, loads that are imported or the load combination that are imported to design plus so as you can see uh, there are uh, other load combination that are that are not in imported because uh, because of uh, its uh, repetitive values meaning uh, if there are values that are or if there are load combinations which is actually gives you a same results for example same your load combination uh, 25 and 26 generate uh, the same PS or MY or MX then automatically uh, design plus will, uh, will choose only one so that uh, it can generate faster so let's just set up the values So for the uh, design of pile cap, so first we must select the type. So in uh, in this uh, part, it is a isolated footing, but we must choose this one isolated pile, and then set up the material properties and the geometric properties of the pile cap so let's use 
the 4500 uh, psi or that is uh, around 30 mpa and then for the main bar let's just use 276 or grade 40 for the depth let's use a 500 depth cover so let's say 75 so that is the minimum value and then uh, in this part you don't need to modify the cx and cy since those are the uh, dimension dimension of the column from the uh, gen model what you can edit is the ex and ey which is the eccentricity of the uh, column so for example uh, let's generate a value so as you can see the drawing will also move so I'm doing a scroll down or scroll up here or you can just input the value so EY so that this is a vertical uh, motion then you may set up your rebar so let's use A20 mm and a 200 spacing and then um, in this part the pie layout so let's uh, let's try only four so for example uh, for example you you get the minimum number of the of piles so that is this uh, this formula so for example uh, the number of piles generated or the number of piles com minimum number of piles uh, computed is 4 then you may uh, initially start with 4 then after that if uh, if if it fails then uh, if it fails then check whether uh, it failed on the bearing capacity or on the on, on or other factors then uh, you can use your engineering judgment to change whatever uh, is needed to change And then let's use a diameter 400. For the spacing, uh, let's use 2.5D. So that is greater than 2D, which is uh, recommended by bolts. For the extension, let's use this 1.25D. So actually, uh, you may uh, modify this uh, part, but uh, in this webinar, I'll just use 1.25D. And you may also input the pile capacity here. So after you, uh, after you input all the parameters, uh, you can now check this structure or this mo uh, this pile cap click check and then in this part uh, let me just change this 200 also there in this part you can view the report let's view the detailed report so in this part, uh, you can view the formulas that are used to calculate the uh, pile cap or the, or the design on pile cap. So here, 
and uh, this report can be uh, generated to a word document and uh, this new feature of design plus the uh, you can gen uh, you can now generate the uh, report to an excel spreadsheet so let's generate the word report so if you click here let me show you I generated it earlier So here is the generated report of the uh, design of file cap, which is uh, actually you can modify, you can add uh, a border or you can input or put a uh, header, here, your own header here, so that uh, you can pass this to the building official so they can check your calculations also after you design or you generate the report you can also generate the drawings so go to drawing and then set up your uh, par uh, drawing options so that is RC footing and then click create So you have now your, I don't mind this, you have now your uh, drawings of PyCap and then you can save it as DWG file so you can modify the drawings. So that's how you uh, design the uh, PyCap using uh, design plus which is actually uh, in accordance to ACI 318-14 so you may check the formulas here and how it is done so after the pile cap the design of pile cap we can now design the or we can now analyze the pile so before that, uh, we're, I'm going to discuss briefly the pile, how to do the pile analysis. So there are certain guidelines on NSCP Chapter 3 for the Earthworks and Foundation. So on Section 301, uh, general requirements are located there. And then for the 302, the excavation and fields. 304 the allowable foundation and lateral pressure 306 the piles uh, general requirements and 307 the pile specific requirements so for a single pile the bearing capacity is equal or the ultimate bearing capacity is equal to the shock resistance plus the tip resistance where QS or the shock resistance is equal to a factor here CA or FS times the uh, surface area of the pile so if it is a circular pile you will use pi D pi D times the length of the pile For uh, the tip resistance, the tip resistance is equal to a tip resistance times the area of the tip. So this 
a small cutie. Uh, it is a any form of stress or pressure, which is a unit of uh, force over area or for per force per area. And then, uh, based on this fundamental theory, uh, numerous theoretical or empirical methods have been developed considering variables in field as below soil type so uh, what uh, what will be the difference is that the value of CA, FS, and QT depending on the soil or the soil type it is, if it is cohesive non-cohesive or soil or rock also the installation method if it is driven or if it is cast in place and the pile material if it is steel, concrete or timber and then next is the settlement for the total settlement it is equal to the elastic settlement of the pile plus the settlement along the shaft and the settlement on the tip For the length of pile, so from this formula, QU is equal to QS plus QT, you may derive the uh, formula of how you can get the length of pile. So the formula will be uh, L is equals to this one, QU minus the QT divided by CA times pi times D for clays. And then for sand, so that uh, the value will be uh, the difference that CA will be changed to FS. So that is the uh, factor. So uh, you may uh, view your reference uh, geotechnical books for the value of CA, FS, and QT. So for QU is equals to QS only or it is a friction pile so the length will be just QU divided by the factor times pi D for QU is equals to QT or the uh, pile is an end bearing pile so QT must be uh, uh, the tip of the pile must reach the depth of which QT must be equal or greater than to QU over 80 or the area of the tip for the, uh, the an uh, analysis of the pile there are different methods how you can do it one of them is py analysis so py analysis is a numerical model that simulates the soil resistance as predefined nonlinear springs where p is the soil pressure per unit length of the pile and y is the pile deflection the soil is represented by a series of nonlinear py curves that vary with depth and soil type so uh, the points to be noted for PY analysis is that different PY curves have been developed for different uh, soil types, uh, reflects nonlinear behavior of the soil, analysis summary, uh, the pile must be a divided beams, the soil must be nonlinear spring, or you or the PY PY curve must be an input parameter. Then calculate the deflection of each pile segment. Depending on the deflection, calculate soil resistance from PY curve. Then deflections and soil pressures are interconnected. So in this uh, slide or in this figure, for example, this one layer A. Uh, it has a curve or a PY curve 
like this so meaning to say if your load or your lateral load is at this level then the deflection is this meaning the k of the or the stiffness of the soil is uh, not just uh, p over deflection but it is a non non uh, it shows a nonlinear uh, behavior also if layer uh, on the layer b it can be like this then if you go to layer c uh, the, the py curve is like this and so on so the other method is the numerical analysis which is a more advanced method for the analysis of piles so the comparison between the two is that on soil behavior py analysis is based on py curve while numerical analysis is based on constitutive method and the pile element that was used in py analysis are beam elements but in numerical anal analysis you may use solid or beam element for the modeling uh, py analysis will use beam plus nonlinear spring but for numerical analysis you can do a 2d or 3d structural model for py analysis uh, it is based for the soil uh, soil structure interaction it is based on py curve and for the numerical analysis it is based on the interface and the embedded uh, elements for the soil structure interaction and uh, py analysis cannot uh, consider the adjacent structure effects while the numerical analysis can do it also in py analysis you can consider the construction stage while in numerical analysis you can do it so the difference is that uh, py analysis can be done in soil works and numerical analysis can be done in Midas GTS and X. So let's proceed to group of piles. So this is just a sample pile group. This is your pile cap, the piles, pile spacing, and the width or the diameter of the pile. On pile groups, the ultimate capacity of piles may not be equal to the number of piles multiplied by the capacity of a single pile. So meaning to say is that uh, the, the ultimate capacity of the uh, pile group uh, is not just by adding the capacity of, of the single pile on that group. So there is what you call a group efficient efficiency factor which is the ratio of the pile group capacity to the total capacity of the piles acting as single piles so the efficiency is e efficiency factor is equal to the ultimate or the group pile capacity divided by uh, the summation of the single pile The group efficiency factor is dependent on number of pile rows, uh, number of piles per row, and spacing and diameter of the piles in the group. So there are uh, uh, formulas on reference books like poles uh, where you can find this uh, group efficiency factor. So to summary, uh, pile foundation is hard to predict because of the pile soil interaction and complex soil behavior. And then unstable soil strata uh, need deep foundation to safely carry load to harder or more stable layers. So next, uh, structures exerting loads like high lateral tilting or heavy vertical loads or structure near excavation site uh, in near exca excavation sites risking the stability required deep foundation load transfer in pile takes 
through skin friction from pile shaft and end bearing resistance uh, from the pile base. Piles could be designed as skin friction, end bearing, or a combination of both depending upon soil condition. And then the method of it's, uh, and then de it also depends on the method of installation, pile material, and external load. Single pile design needs estimation of bearing capacity, settlement, and lateral behavior. And then for lateral behavior, PY analysis and numerical analysis is commonly done. So, so let's now go to the uh, input parameters that we're going to use to analyze the pile. Assuming that uh, we have a three layer of uh, soil with this ground material properties, sand uh, with a screen fiction of 10 kPa and 50 kPa bearing uh, capacity. So this is capacity. And then sand uh, another sand but different um, skin friction and bearing capacity um, bearing capacity weather drop for the third layer which is uh, 12 meter from the NGL sand 6 meter from JL and then this first layer is 3 meter from the NGL For the structural property, we're going to use the pile cap that we used earlier. And then if there are, or after we design the piles and then there are some failures, you may go back to the step where we design the pile cap and then uh, analyze again using uh, this, uh, this procedure, what we're going to do next, and then proceed to the design of the piles. For the design of pile, oh, I'm sorry, for the pile analysis, what we're going to do is from minus 10, so we have these forces. We can uh, select all of this and then export it to Excel, which is this. And then these forces must be uh, uh, exported to SoilWorks. So what we're going to do, since there are so far there are no direct uh, link between SoilWorks and Gen, but uh, what we're going to do is that we can just simply copy and paste these forces to SoilWorks. So let me show you. We go now to SoilWorks. So let me introduce you to SoilWorks first. Uh, SoilWorks or Midas SoilWorks uh, is a software used for the analysis of uh, ground or slope rock, soft ground, uh, foundation, seepage, and dynamic analysis of soils. So it is divided into seven modules, which I mentioned earlier. And then each module has different function depend depending on what you're going to an uh, what you're going to do with the soil. If you want to analyze the ground, you may use the ground module, or if you want to analyze the soil or the slope of the uh, soil you may use the slope module you can or slope or rock module if it is a rock material if it is a soft ground for the 1d or 2d consolidation you may use soft ground module for the uh, foundation you may use foundation module for the seepage analysis, you can use seepage 
module and then for the dynamic analysis of the soil you can use dynamic analysis so in this uh, webinar we will just be using the foundation module so let's uh, just click OK because this is just the setting up your or just defining your initial parameters so what's good about the foundation module is that uh, the ribbon menu here uh, is arranged in order so that once you started your uh, modeling your uh, your foundation here you just have to you just uh, just have go through through all of this if it is needed so for example we need to define the ground material property then just click this and then structural property up to analysis so first we're going to define the ground material property so click ground material and then so we're going to add uh, the material properties earlier so let's just name this as sun and then you may select the color so let's just select this color and then model type sun unit weight so the first layer is 16 for the unit weight and then the saturated unit weight is 18 the internal friction angle is 25 and then the additional parameters we're going to use sandy soil api and then for the ultimate uh, skin friction let's use 10 and then bearing is 50 and then click add so proceed to the next uh, material or ground material that is sand with but this time the unit weight is different that is 17 saturated unit weight is 19 by the way all of these values can be uh, can be found on your geotechnical report so before you uh, before you use this uh, program make sure that the values here are um, are found on your geotechnical report since we cannot just uh, we cannot just input values here that are not violated by or are not validated by a geotechnical engineer In, uh, internal friction angle 26 and then uh, next is skin friction we use 15 and then for the bearing capacity it is 60 click add or let's choose a color click add and then the last one is weather drop select the color so same procedure so let's use soft rock I'm sorry let's use uh, sand and then unit weight will be 20 then here 22 and then friction angle 28 material type uh, sandy soil 
for the initial horizontal subgrade reaction let's use 43,000 in skin uh, skin friction 25 and then the ultimate bearing capacity is 3,000 so as you've noticed uh, the the capacity of the soil from the first layer to the first layer ah to the last layer or the third layer are uh, basically increasing so it's like you need to uh, to find where the soil will uh, generate a stable foundation so that is the, the job of the geotechnical engineer and we'll just have to uh, to do an analysis or use our engineering skills to design properly our foundation and then click add and then close then next is the structural property type the name so um, here and then use cast in place none and then shape is round so it is done here then use D of uh, 400 mm so that's what we used earlier for the material data go to material tab and then so since 30 uh, 30 MPA approximately it has a modulus of elasticity equal to uh, 25,000 MPA so you can use this and then the unit weight let's use 23.56 and then click add so we are now done the structural property then go to soil layer so let's just name this as layer 1 sun the depth will be 3 3 meters so that will be below the natural ground line next is layer 2 so that is 6 then the second sand uh, second sand from the ground uh, material property next is layer 3 this 12 then you uh, choose weather drop and then click add so you have now your soil layer then go to foundation type So in this part, you will just have to input the uh, just have to input the geometric properties of your footing or your foundation. So the B will be from the previous uh, design of pile cap that is a two meter by two meter by five hundred mm. Depth of underside, it is uh, the location of the bottom of the footing from the NGL. So if you uh, put zero, then the bottom of the footing will be abo just above the NGL. But if you put a positive value, then it will be below the ground. If you put a negative value, it will be above the NGL so uh, for example we want it to be below the ground so let's just use 0 0.5 so this uh, this actually depends on uh, where you will locate your or, or where, we, where will you uh, put your foundation or the bottom of your foundation so structural property we'll use pile which uh, we defined earlier 
and then the pi length will use a six uh, six meter assuming that we get the values uh, from the uh, analysis that uh, or the formula that uh, I showed earlier number of rows let's uh, use two left uh, distance so that is uh, let's just use this equal interval of one there you go and then click uh, meaning uh, or let's so that uh, that is point 2.5 d right so that is one meter so that's this is correct so you click file relocation and then in this drawing you can view the files and then under this file coordinates uh, you can view the uh, the coordinates of the location of the piles and then the pile length and then the beta angle of the pile or the uh, uh, orientation of the pile so since it is just a circular pile then no need to modify this but if it is an H pile you'll have to verify it from the drawing then uh, if there's a need to change the orientation then use this beta angle rotation angle this one is used for battle pi battered piles uh, if there is an inclination for that pile then you may uh, input the rotation angle that pile uh, with respect to the vertical axis and then the tip condition tip type so that is uh, you can select if it is a free end hinge support or fixed end at the bottom and so let's just use free and at the head condition uh, you may select or you may modify the uh, the uh, uh, boundary condition between the pile cap and the piles so you may use fixed end or hinge support or uh, elastically restrain so after you set up your foundation type so click add or uh, just type the name I forgot click add and then close so you have now your foundation type so define py curve since we we have our soil layer uh, information we can just skip this uh, uh, it will just uh, ha you just have to in this part you just have to input the py your uh, the values of your py curve but since uh, soilworks can generate it by just uh, putting the soil layer then no need to go here this one foundation load type so in this part uh, we'll, uh, we'll just put all, all our uh, all our uh, loads but it must be like this Vx, Vy, P, Mx, My, and Mc so from my this gen So from my test gen, we generated this fx, which is shear along x, fy, shear along y, and then fz, vertical, mx, my, and mz. So as you've noticed, uh, this fx, fy, fz, mx, my, mz are the same. Uh, are the same uh, for this. Uh, for this value but 
uh, the problem is that or what we need to do is uh, since it is a reaction we need to uh, we need to change the sign so that it will transfer to the piles so what we're going to do is to change the sign of this uh, value so just uh, we'll just put negative for this value and then so let's copy this There you go. And then, so since we have now our negative values, so we can now just double click here and then. So we don't need this part. Also, what we need is up to CLCB23 only. Since we go to minus gen. we go to the load combination you will notice that CLCB or concrete load combination 23 is a uh, strength load so no need to copy this or you can copy this but uh, that is for another analysis maybe you want to view the deflection so you can use this uh, uh, service uh, load combination but for the design of file since we will uh, we want to get the beam forces generated or based from the loads or the factored loads then we will use the um, strength loads here So that is only up to here. So we can right click or select this and copy. And then just paste it here or control V. Then automatically it is now added to the SolidWorks. But we have to change. Uh, CLCB3 downward to load state seismic since uh, it involves a seismic load and CLCB1 is 1.4 DL CLCB2 is 1.2 DL plus 1.6 live load so we'll just change this And then after that, click close. Then you can now define your water level. So in this uh, in this model, I've used a water level of. Let me check. Uh, 5 meters below the ground so let's name it as water lever and then pipe so there you have it your model so next is uh, we can now define the analysis case click add 
so let's name this as file analysis and then py nonlinear for the analysis method and then the control data so let's just say we just divide the elements into 10 elements only and then for the uh, data use in analysis so of course we'll use the uh, file foundation which we defined earlier water level the water level that we defined for the load uh, since uh, it is a nonlinear analysis if we input all of these values it will take time to analyze so let's just get a one load combination for example load combination 3 and then click apply and then close and we can now go to the analysis and then click perform analysis so let's use this so that's it if you go to pile uh, displacement or member forces and here you can uh, view the element of uh, forces or the beam forces for the pile number 11 one, one, pile number 12 one, 21 or 22 two. so for example let's just use the pile 11 one, one. so here are all the forces but before that uh, if we go to Uh, this part the uh, the node tab of this pile displacement and member force you will notice that on each node it has a different py curve depending on the layer of the soil so what the uh, SOLIDWORKS do is that it, an it analyzes the pile to a nonlinear analysis but actually you can do it as well in MIDAS-GEN but you have to input the uh, nonlinear uh, nonlinear uh, spring support for, uh, for your soil layer so let me show you So in my dash gen, you can actually direct uh, directly model your piles here. But the problem is, so here, this one, you will define the uh, the force deformation function first. And then you can apply the multilinear uh, spring support. So, for example, let me add. For one meter, it is a 150. And then on two meters, or let's say zero and then at 2 meters it is 350 so it is a non-linear function so depending on the uh, values that you will generate so you must input the values here or if you have uh, a if you have a uh, if you have your own spreadsheet to generate the PY curve then you can maybe you can just copy and paste it uh, here the uh, the coordinates of the force uh, deformation function 
but if you use soil works sorry but if you use soil works it will uh, automatically uh, calculate the the py curve for each layer so what we're going what we're just going to do is to uh, click on this element and then export this uh, file to excel so let's generate this file and then uh, these forces can now be transferred to uh, design plus so, so we can design the file so next or uh, the last step is the design of the files for the design of the file uh, portions of the foundation members in air water or soils not capable of providing adequate restraint throughout the member length to prevent buckling shall be designed as columns in accordance with uh, the applicable provisions of section 4 410 so it is allowed to design your piles as columns if uh, for the uh, Fractural design. If it, uh, if, uh, if it cannot, if it cannot uh, restrain uh, a certain length of the pile, or the soil cannot restrain the pile, the, uh, you may design that part as columns. For the earthquake resistant structure. Uh, piles, piers, or caissons shall have transverse reinforcement in accordance with section 4187.5.2a through e, 4187.5.3 uh, and 4187.5.4, excluding requirement C and F uh, of table 4187.5.4 at locations A and B. So, uh, section 4187.5. Point five, that is actually for uh, the transverse reinforcement of the column. So uh, the design will be the same as column, but there uh, there's just some uh, uh, there are just some requirements that we need to follow, like this, uh, excluding requirements C and F for the locations A and B. So this is the locations A and B. So So what we're going to do is we will just copy these forces to Excel. But we need to know first if it is arranged according to uh, the on how my does design plus um, inputs the values of the forces so go to design plus and then change your uh, type here to column and then or just go to column here and then click add and then add your material material here so let's use 30 and then for the main bar and the hook bar we will use uh, we will use a grade 40 so depend uh, depends on what will you use for the width uh, for the shapers we just circular and then the diameter is 400 for the length let's use 6 
or the KX and KY so if you click this uh, button then you can view the uh, the pi uh, the or this, the displacement of the column so since uh, uh, it is not a pin pin connection the top is fixed and then the bottom we say it, uh, it is free or it is restrained by the uh, soil then we can use this uh, k factor for this uh, bending so that is 0.7 or if you have uh, or if you have your own explanation of why you will use this or this part then you can uh, use your k factor here and then for the forces we'll just click here and then click load combination so the values will be p u m x m y v x p y so that is axial or vertical loads m x m y v x p y so that that uh, that will be the, the arrangement that we want to uh, we want to generate so moment first and then the shear so in this part uh, so vertical force so it is uh, it is okay here and but the shear and the moment are 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 in different position so we can interchange them but we can delete this fyz or this myz because it's just the uh, resultant of these two Let's cut here and then paste, insert cut, and then it is now arranged. But what we're going to do is that this vertical forces must be changed into a uh, negative values of this because. Uh, compression members in soil works are in negative values but the positive values are the attention uh, what is are the tension forces so we'll just negative value of this and then copy this value so that's it we can now copy all of this copy and then on design plus can control B uh, I mean use the control B function for the paste so there you have it your forces and then click OK and then for the rebar so let's use a for example let's use a 10 m 10 the diameter of 20 so let's try that then the concrete cover let's use 75 And then let's use a diameter of 12 for the transverse reinforce, uh, reinforcement and then apply special provisions so it will be a earthquake resistant structure so let's uh, let's not uh, use this first the tie bar let's check and then if we check here so there are values uh, or part that uh, the pile has failed 
so if you check the detailed report uh, you can view where it is uh, or where the failure for uh, on the calculation is located so by that you can adjust or you, uh, you will know by your engineering judgment where to adjust your uh, files take note that uh, there are some exceptions in the calculation so you need to check if it is included here or it is not included then you can uh, remove that part or you'll just have to modify it so that's how you design your file so in conclusion uh, to design your file uh, what we do here is we'll just design it initially so there are failure uh, there are failures here so what uh, what we're going to do is we need to uh, adjust some parameters for example we need to change the spacing then check it again then as you can see most of them are now passed but uh, the special provisions for seismic design are still failing so uh, what we're going to do is to use our engineering judgment what uh, we're gonna do next so this is actually the initial stage of how you design your files and then the next will be uh, will be uh, uh, will be on you so uh, that's how you do file design using uh, Midas Gen uh, Design Plus and Midas Oilworks so by integrating that three uh the three software you can easily get the forces and not just that you can actually generate the report to check your calculations and generate your drawings as well so if you have uh, more questions you can uh You can just put your questions or just send your questions to us on the chat box so we may uh, answer you or uh, if you, uh, or, or if you have some questions also you can contact us through email um, and then we will answer questions right away so I think that's it and thank you for attending this webinar uh, God bless everyone